Hello, so we are back here and this time I plan to dig deep into another tactical item of my interest, how to find the product market fit. By the way, this is not just a term used by technology startup founders. It is absolutely applicable and super critical for any founder who is launching a product. Figuring out the product market fit is like finding the holy grail. The early stage questions we have to ask ourselves are, do you know who this product is for? And if you are lucky to have an answer, then the immediate next question I have is, are you sure if that customer wants this product and do they even want to use it the way you are building it? I can tell you right now, more than 85% or four out of the five founders will go silent at this point. If you want to figure out the product market fit, the first thing you need to learn is the state of the market. Check this chart in the video if it looks familiar to you. It's from the famous book Crossing the Chasm and describes how products penetrate the market. I will leave it in the comments as well for you. So why is it important to know the state of the market? The answer is surprisingly simple because different market stages need different types of products and marketing strategies that go with it. And it can tell you what products the market will need in the near future. When you target for innovators and early adopters, there's a need for a revolutionary toy. People want to play with it, customize it, and share what they can do with your product in specific communities. But when the market is crossing the chasm, it doesn't need another shiny toy with all bunch of options. It needs an easy to use product that you barely remember. You have it, but quickly realize about it when you don't. This market stage needs a product that works for you and you don't have to care. Now what's key is to adjust the product strategy, the feature strategy and development strategy based on the market stage where you want to play. Considering that the market demands and always wins, we have to be very attentive and listening to our prospective customers all the time. If you come too shiny and you're entering the early majority stage of the market, not many in that segment will be interested. You may need to adjust your product to a more commodity flavor that is useful and simple to use. As you target the late majority segment of customers, you have to provide convenience above everything. Something that saves people time and money and serves a purpose right away. Now from my experiences of failures and listening to other successful entrepreneurs over these years, what I found out is that one of the most common mistakes that startups make is to build something that no one needs. Um, majority of us tend to come up with a cool idea and then try to find ways that our intended customers can end up using it. So it is a more deductive process, but it needs to be more inductive in nature. We need to go and communicate with the intended customers and talk to them and empathize with their problems. The goal is to find their pains and then try to solve them. That is rather an inductive method. In this method, we get to understand the customer psychology and in the process, we are able to identify who are our real customers are. These are the buyers who define our market and shape our products. So when we are developing a product to fit the market need, we need to develop the customer as well. First, we have to figure out where our users hang out. Then we have to iterate on the language and the message to describe our product and land in a place where the customer understands the product fairly easily. This is iteration. This iteration is performed through in-person meetings, uh, surveys, questions uh, that you may ask them. Like, hey, why did you do what you did today? Uh, then you may ask, how did you perform this task? Uh, were you frustrated while doing this, what you're doing right now? And would your life change significantly if this method of doing things improved for you? So once you have arrived at the point where your product description matches uh, with the customer's pain description, you have found a solution fit. At this point, your language and your messaging has tightened up, uh, have tightened up, and this is the point where you can demand money for the product. Discovering the product market fit is a iterative, an iterative process. And in the early days, we'll be iterating on the message, the customer, and the product features. When you take into account the market stage, the customer personas, the pain points, and the core need, which we call the purpose, we'll be able to target into the product market fit much, much faster. And be mindful that failure is a recipe to finding that product market fit. As long as we are failing fast and keeping the cost of failure as low as possible. And that's why we need short bursts of iterations and experiments. 
Experimentation is key to finding that fit. And we have to always remember, you may have a great vision, but the market wins all the time. So we have to always pay heed to the market and fit accordingly. So pay attention to the market. Uh, look at the pain points of your customers, talk to them, empathize, realize that where you need to attack to meet that stage of the market, and then evolve the product and continuously iterate, experiment, and change the features and go and talk to the customers back again. And this process of continuous pivoting and working with the product to fit the need will eventually get you to find the real product market fit. Once again, thank you so much for your time again today. And I appreciate you got some good valuable ideas over here. And please share yours again on the comment section. And I look forward to talking to you again. Have a wonderful rest of the day. Bye now.